you know, I'm not even sure where to start uh, with this one, but basically I consider it um, an important uh, point, an important um, change in the atmosphere or change in the, it's a spiritual demarcation that uh, you need to take off uh, or you need to take uh, note of. Um, the first thing that I should point out is that this is a kind of uh, topic that um, has increased um, lately for the past, um, I'd say for this whole year, the, uh, these kind of uh, beings have been uh, have been so uh, immensely involved in my spiritual uh, my spiritual visions and dreams than um, than does happen normally. So I'm going to talk about a dream, and um, like I said, consider this uh, demarcation of a spiritual uh, season, one coming to an end and another one um, taking over. Now within the major season. Remember, we are still in the season of destruction of the systems and the um, and the powers of the current age, and you are moving to an age which is um, whose spirits we are being introduced uh, to. Now, as far as these creatures are concerned, I'm not sure um, how much um, they will be involved in the uh, in the coming age. All I know is that, um, or I don't even know if their purpose is for this uh, bridging season, because we are kind of uh, in a bridge to say. Let's say we are, um, if you were crossing from this end to the next end, and there was a bridge in between, uh, now we will be walking in the middle of that bridge. So these are uh, the kinds of spirits that are joining us while we are on that bridge in the process of crossing from one edge to the next. And the involvement, definitely they would um, be involved in the, in the transition process. Um, but other than that, um, time will tell, time will tell. But remember, as we, it's a micro season, it's a portion of the season of destruction that we've been in for a number of years, a long time, uh, maybe decades, because um, this is the kind of, uh, this message of the destruction started in the year 2005, so we are in the, uh, from 2005 to 2023, this is the 18th, um, the 18th year that this message is, um, is still being delivered, and um, there have been many uh, sub-seasons in the, in the delivery of this season. So this is one of those uh, submiss, uh, sub seasons. And currently, uh, we are almost at the end of the last, um, we are actually at the end. So what's happening now is the transitional period. And these are transitional powers um, whose uh, participation in the coming age I'm not sure of. So here starts uh, the dream. And um, I consider this as more, of a, as more of a warning. So I'm referring to uh, my notebook. So this, uh, this dream started with a warning uh, from, uh, from the ruling powers. I was, um, I was understanding uh, the kind of understanding that you do uh, have or you do get when the dream uh, persists. So the people who are warning us were actually the powers that be, that um, rule over us in the current age or in this transition period, the ones that we've come with from the previous age. So they were warning us that um, there was this class of beings that were coming that were alien to the earth, meaning they had left, they had been here before, but they had left, and now they were coming back. That is the understanding that I had as the, um, as the leaders who came in form of the leaders of the, of the time uh, were informing us. So um, part of that warning um, and this was not just a warning from, uh, from the leaders. The leaders were informing us. Then, uh, in my understanding, we started uh, relating their, their coming back to the Earth with uh, the presence of the solar exploration satellites. And I was seeing uh, the waves that were being um, emitted uh, by these satellites as also providing um, a clue of the pathways that they were going to, uh, they were going to lead as they, were coming, um, as they were coming to the Earth. So um, what I was seeing was that the, the satellite dishes or the satellite objects were on the earth and, the, and these alien beings um, were able to communicate with them somehow. These were their pathways. I don't know if it was intentional or, but these were the pathways that uh, they were using to, to be guided back to the earth. Remember I said back. It was not the first time that they, was, they were coming. They've been here before, had left and are now uh, coming back again. 
So as the leaders were, um, were saying or speaking or making us come to the understanding of these things, I saw that the people were not believing them. The people had doubts. Or they did not understand. The people were in denial basically and did not, um, did not believe what they were hearing. They mostly ignored their wants and messages. And the leaders continued uh, to publish uh, this warning in various forms. So as this part was uh, continuing, I would see historical um, government actions, like, uh, is, like things like uh, movies, like this uh, uh, UFO uh, thing, disclosure things, or publications. Um, the understanding that I got was this was their way of um, a soft disclosure to the public. Um, to enable us to uh, to come to acceptance of uh, the presence and the likely and especially to be a warning that uh, this was going to happen in the future. So uh, they, these uh, publications also took the form of hidden artistic um, impressions and theories that they created of existence of such like beings. And um, this is one of the things that we need to take about uh, to take seriously about uh, the media generally because. Um, some of these things are actually uh, messages that are hidden, whether it's uh, by um, basing a story on or um, sneaking in information that you need to know. These are some of the softer ways of passing information to the public, especially information that they really need to know about, but is sensitive. And of late, I've been getting a lot of um, uh, disclosed um, information just by watching TV or by watching uh, movies or by watching um, even talks. Uh, so you need to pay attention, especially when you're dealing with things that need to go through um, government, uh, government, um, what is it called? Um, the government has to, um, to allow to be shown to the public. You'll find, for example, in places like Hollywood, most, uh, there's a lot of uh, messaging given, um, especially concerning the, um, the ideas or the lessons that the government would like to share with members of uh, their public. So one of uh, my brothers who were there had a photo, and this photo seemed like it, it was a photo of a very old um, excavated um, archi architectural piece of uh, a piece of a monument that looked uh, built uh, in the form of. Um, uh, the sacred, uh, what we call the sacred, um, the sacred, is it the sacred mathematics? The, the same design that is used in ancient, um, ancient Roman uh, buildings or um, the old ancient buildings which are, have pillars, rounded pillars and a square seated on top of the pillars like this. So that thing looks like this, if I bring my, so let's say these are the pillars of the, of the thing, very old, extremely old, then on top of it, was a, um, a square that looked like this, with a base of course, and it seemed that it was uh, naturally sealed, maybe by erosion, but in my understanding I understood it to be an ancient uh, uh, entry, and it seemed to be on a mountain. So it had some scriptural engravings, especially in the middle, here in the middle of this, there was some, um, some sculptures that were embedded um, all over, decorated, and it seemed to be a pathway that was entering into the um, the mountain, and it seemed uh, to have been sealed after these creatures had used it uh, over in one age. Then they left, and um, when they left, it became uh, in that kind of uh, form that I was seeing it. And men had already discovered it in that form, so it hadn't been inhabited, uh, inhabited, hadn't been used for uh, hundreds or even thousands of years. That's how old it looked. The photo was even black and white. It looked like it had been taken even a very long time ago. So um, when I saw this uh, this photo that my brother showed to me, I understood that um, it was it was a structure that was important to these beings, and they had used it in a previous lifetime and had uh, deserted it. It was not inhabited anymore. However, part of my understanding was that there was some. Um, some of the modern uh, societies, the societies that we don't, um, are kind of uh, rumors most of the time. My understanding of that was that the societies were trying to figure it out in their, um, in their little societal uh, thing that uh, they do. They had tried or were still trying to figure it out. 
So I wrote that uh, it was like an ancient civilization that had been um, deserted, what we call ruin, and the things, the kind of thing that uh, UNESCO has been labeling as World Heritage Sites. So that was exactly how it looked. It looked just like an entry uh, on the side of a on the side of a rocky mountain. Okay. So this. Uh, So this um, this place was going to be inhabited again. This is the understanding that I got. It was going to be inhabited again, and it was going to be um, uh, they're going to return, and they're going to uh, find it again. And it's like it represented a, a revival of their um, of their of their power, I'd say because they would transform it into the something that would be so uh, so central to their uh, to their form of government because I was seeing that they were coming as a new government that had intention of uh, taking charge so um, we need to understand that the dream was both a warning of uh, a thing to, things to come and while the dream was ongoing what was being warned started happening so as the dream continued uh, what I had understood would happen started happening. They started streaming in through the the satellite uh, wavelengths into the earth in droves, and they started finding this place and accessing it. The other thing that I need to say is that they seem to be um, they had supernatural powers. They don't they did not look like men, um, and they they were bigger uh, in height than men, um, not as good looking as men. Let's see. And so they were kind of translucent, like spiritual beings that were able to interact with the world, but their movement was um, more of spiritual than physical because they were coming through the, they were just gliding through the atmosphere and the air. And they could see it would, um, and taking position and taking places of um, authority. So I wrote, uh, they were not human like. I felt that they had supernatural abilities and there was a feeling of apprehension because they were coming to take, uh, they were coming to rule, they were not coming to for holiday, they were coming to take power. And indeed, that is why I'm saying that um, I'm here to inform that um, this marks the beginning of a new, uh, the rule of a new prince and this uh, this authority uh, in my observation, uh, seemed like it, uh, it's not regional, it's not country specific, it's worldwide, worldwide. <sighs> okay, so an explanation maybe. Um, when Christ was on earth, he kept saying that, um, he, came, he kept referring to the systems of this world. So when I'm talking about new kings and new princes, which I do a lot, I'm talking about these systems of this world. And many times there are systems from the realm of darkness. There are times that I announce angels that are not uh, in the realms of darkness, but you will find that the angels of God are not, the angels, the holy angels are not really interested in, um, uh, in, uh, in power. They're more interested in execution of their duties and they, Actually, on most, uh, on most occasions, you'll find uh, the angels of God, most of the time, wield more power than some of these princes, but um, it's because of the kind of, uh, um, I'd say the, the place that we inhabit in the universe is a dark place. That's the reason why uh, powers of darkness from the surrounding air are taking uh, power over um, our lives, but the earth, the earth is not, the earth has a mix of, um, and I'm sure it's not just the earth. They usually say that, uh, or if you study most of the oriental, the oriental books, they'll talk about um, the law of um, duality, uh, even in uh, places like India, then you go and read the, uh, the Apocryphon of John, and you begin to understand that if God did uh, reveal himself as good, revealed himself as hope, joy, goodness, godliness, justice, compassion. 
then what uh, this other what these powers were resisting eventually became manifest too. See, because they cannot be good if um, there's nothing the good is trying to uh, to hold off, so that uh, only good remains. So this is why uh, there's a lot of um, oppression on the earth. There's a lot of um, there are two spirits that are at war with each other. Sometimes they uh, it's not a very definitive. Uh, in my opinion, it's not a very definitive state of being between where the darkness starts and where light starts. But it's important also to know that there is no place. Uh, Paul said this in one of his letters: that uh, where would I go to be separated from God? There is no place in this universe that you could be separated from God. So this is not to discourage anybody, but to inform. And also remember that uh, all power eventually is answerable to God. Remember the entire universe is a manifestation of one one God. So everywhere you will be at any time, or whomever you will be around at any time, is another part of God. Evil, no matter how evil a person is, um, there is a part of them, of their essence, that has that element of God in them, that you can still connect them and find God uh, in. So um, this is an encouragement that this is not, this, this doesn't mean the, doesn't mean um, that the world uh, is gone, is going to crash, come crashing down. Okay, maybe it will when we, when, when the poles change, but, or when we meet Andromeda, the great Andromeda that is racing towards us. But for now, um, for now this is just information. We are on a bridge, remember, we are crossing. And this is one of the powers that is probably needed to help us cross uh, into the other side of the bridge, be it by destruction of things that we've held uh, so dear, uh, so that we can come to know um, the things that are, uh, are important and the things that are not, because remember we're going into another age and you cannot come with the baggage of the past age, because the past age was designed to, um, to sustain the powers that uh, created it. So um, I'm hoping that as you hear this, uh, this message, it will not cause alarm.